want to welcome everyone here in worship and those who are watching online. We uh, have people here in person. I'm glad for that. Last week we didn't. And so um, we are, are ready to begin our, our service. So we begin with some opening songs. Uh, and our first song is, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3 of this song. lesson and the, all the text today. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus. My hope is built on nothing else than Jesus. My hope is built on nothing more than Jesus. He and he alone is the foundation of everything that we have in the, in the Christian faith and as Christians in this life and the next. And what we have is absolute forgiveness an absolute love. We can't see that any more uh, clearly than in the psalm today uh, and exemplified in, in the life uh, of Joseph in the first lesson today. And so I, a, a song about the amazing love and compassion of God, how deep the Father's love for us. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The father turns his face That held him there 
until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything. No gifts, no power, no wish. sing this song forgive our sins as we forgive Jesus is going to and we are in Luke's gospel today and uh, in the section of Luke's, Luke's gospel that is the Sermon on the Mount um, and uh, uh, that we, we traditionally read from Matthew's gospel but the words are just as powerful here in Luke as they were in, in Matthew as Jesus calls us to love our enemies to forgive them and to pray for them. So I thought of this song, Forgive Our Sins As We Forgive, but uh, I, I'd like to sing it to a, a little bit more familiar tune, um, which the tune is, Oh That the Lord Would Guide My Ways. Forgive our sins as we forgive. You taught us, Lord, to pray, but you alone can grant us grace to live the words we say. How can your pardon reach and bless the unforgiving heart that proves on wrongs and will not let old bitterness depart? Blazing light, your cross reveals the truth we dimly knew. What trivial debt our own to us, how great our debt to you. Lord, cleanse the depths within our souls and bid resentment cease. Then bow to all in bonds of love. Our life will spread your peace. I love that verse. How can your pardon reach and bless the unforgiving heart that broods on wrongs and will not let old bitterness depart? When we fill our hearts with revenge and bitterness, there's hardly any room for God's love. And the gift of forgiveness is that our hearts can be emptied how trivial debts are owed to us, how great our debt to you, and yet he gives it so willingly to us. Well, those are our three songs as we begin our Saturday worship service. Again, I could just say to everyone that, that our hope is to get back outside, but in the winter months, that's right now unpractical only because um, the FM feed is uh, broken and uh, so many churches we, we had one given to us by Matt Paychak who had made his own many years ago 
Well, it's broken and has since the middle of December. And we're trying to buy a new one, but every church in the country started using FM feeds for, for services out in parking lots, just like we did. And so, like toilet paper at the beginning or hand sanitizer at the beginning of COVID, there's none available, and there still aren't. We can get one that will reach, uh, that will reach 15 feet. <laughs> That'd be like two car lengths. It's just pointless. Uh, and we can get one that reaches a mile. Well, that wouldn't even be legal. The, the, uh, the FCC has guidelines on how far it could go. So in any event, we are just searching uh, to get a new FM feed or get the one fixed that we had. And we hope to have one, but they're just hard to come by. You could pray about that for us, and then we could be back out in the uh, parking lot. Uh, now, as weather moderates and it's warm enough for people to have windows down, we can go back out there with just our speakers, and that'll work because people can have their windows down. But, but right now, while it's awful cold out, we're just going to have to be stuck here in the uh, chapel. And what a beautiful place to be stuck with the beautiful window of, of Noah's Ark and the rainbow. And uh, members of our church got together for several months uh, to cut this glass and then put it together. What a great blessing it is. And the son of one of our members in the past uh, uh, helped our, taught our people how to do this and helped them put it together. So it's great to be uh, in this place uh, for, for worship today. Well, we begin our worship as in the green bulletin that we have. As together we, we, we make the sign of the cross and say, we are under the care of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So, let me get up and come to uh, the scripture page I have here and read the scriptures appointed for this day. And um, the uh, the prayer of the day I think I'll start with just uh, um, to, for the appointed for the seventh Sunday after Epiphany. Uh, Easter is going to be later than the average this year. And you know that because very frequently we only go to the fourth Sunday after Epiphany and then Transfiguration. Once in a while to the fifth Sunday after, uh, after uh, uh, Epiphany. But this year we are at the seventh Sunday after Epiphany. And there aren't any more in the calendar. So we're near the, the latest that Easter can be this year. And uh, Lent starts for us on Ash Wednesday. And we're going to do a service now if it's good weather out, and I don't know, we can have from now. We'll try and do it outside at 11 o'clock. But if, if it's cold and people have to sit with their car windows up, we'll, we'll be doing Ash Wednesday at 11 in the chapel. But, but 6 o'clock soup suppers, not on Ash Wednesday, uh, the following Wednesdays. And a 7 o'clock worship in the sanctuary. So, uh, a prayer of the day. Let us pray. O oh God, you know the fears, our fears, and our lack of confidence. Forgive our willful ways and defend our faith through the teachings of Christ, through whom you got, gather saints to give you glory without end. Grant us, we pray, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and uh, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson is just this wonderful story near the conclusion of the long Joseph story in the book of Genesis uh, that is summarized in just a couple chapters later by his phrase to his brothers who had sold him into slavery and yet God used it. His phrase was, you meant it for evil, 
but God meant it for good. He had forgiven his brothers. And we see that moment of forgiveness come from Joseph to his brothers in the text from Genesis 45, 3 through 15. If anyone in all of history should have held a grudge against someone, been resentful, bitter, it would have been Joseph. But let's hear what happened. Joseph said to his brothers, they, they come to Egypt to receive grain in the famine. And you perhaps know the story of Joseph. If not, well, we can read it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, come near to me, please. And they came near. And he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children and your flocks and your herds and all that you have. There I will provide for you, for there are yet five years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have do not come to poverty. And now your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see, that it is my mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father, of all my honor in Egypt, and of all that you have seen, hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck, and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked with him. They were going to kill him. And one of the brothers, Judah, saved his life by saying, no, no, don't, don't kill him. Uh, but they sold him into slavery. And he'd been at Potiphar's house and then accused of a heinous crime and was put in prison. And there he languished for many years. And Well, God, led, God brought him there to save the people of Israel. But he could have been bitter, should have been bitter. But he, he was full of forgiveness. Well, that's the heart of God, and we see that heart in Psalm 103. We'll read it responsibly by whole verse, uh, verses 1 through 13. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity and heals all your diseases, who crowns your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. So far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. Wow. 
What a song. We've been in the, the book of 1 Corinthians since chapter 12 for uh, most of these weeks of Epiphany. And this is our last reading from uh, chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, verses 21 to 26 and 30 to 42. An important principle here, um, notably seen at the beginning and at the end, um, this is a section that deals about the resurrection, but there's more to it than that. We read, beginning of verse 21, For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end. When he delivers the kingdom of God to the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Why are we in danger every hour? I protest, brothers, by my pride in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I, I die every day. What do I gain if, humanly speaking, I fought with beasts at Ephesus? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. But do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Wake up from your drunken stupor as is right, and, and do not go on sinning. For some have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? You foolish person. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen. And to each kind of seed is its own body. Not all flesh is the same. And there is one kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. But the glory of the heavenly is not it is of one kind, and the glory of the earthly is of another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For stars differ from star in glory, but it is the resurrect or so it is in the resurrection of the dead. What is so imperishable what, excuse me, what is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. Here ends our second lesson. Our gospel lesson from St. Luke, the 27th, St. Luke, the 6th chapter, beginning at verse 27. Jesus said, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To the one who strikes you on the cheek, offer it the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you. And from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you love those from whom you expect, excuse me, and if you lend to those 
from whom you expect to receive what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But you but love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. What a wonderful, powerful passage of Scripture. Resentment is the poison, it's been said. Resentment is the poison you give to yourself while thinking how much you're damaging the other person. Poison is the, excuse me, resentment is the poison you give yourself while thinking how much you're damaging the other person. Resentment, bitterness, grudges. Holding on to the sins of other people and keeping track of them, counting them up and recounting them time and again. This animosity towards others who have at some time injured or hurt us is what Jesus is trying to free us from. Somehow, God was at work in the life of Joseph. And he should have held on to bitterness, but humanly speaking, and resentment and anger at his brothers who sold him as a slave. But somehow, he saw God's purpose in it all. He trusted God. And he forgave his brothers. So great was his stature that they couldn't imagine that the man speaking to them years later was his bro was their brother, whom they had sold into slavery. And so he had to reveal himself and tell them that I know who you are. I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. That's the secret they've been keeping from Dad. Remember that taken his cloak, and <coughs> many colored cloak, and torn it up and poured blood on it and took it to dad and said, we haven't been able to find our brother, but, but it, it, this looks like it might be his, his cloak that you gave him. Wh what do you think, dad? And dad looked at it and saw it torn to shreds with blood all over it and said, oh, wild animals have killed him. And they kept the secret all those years. Imagine what that must have done to them. They knew that they had told their father, well, all they'd really done is shown him the coat, right? But they led their father astray. And he believed his son was dead and he mourned his son. And they lived with that every day. The secret never escaped from them. But what damage it must have done, holding on to that secret. And what damage it must have done initially to, to, to Joseph to be sold into slavery. And what horrible damage it did to their father Jacob, grieving the loss of his son. And here years later, this man standing before him says, I am jo your brother Joseph, whom you sold into slavery. The secret is out. And thank God that it's out. Do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. 
what you did was wrong, but God has used it. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And he didn't hold a grudge. He said, go get dad, bring him down, and I am going to care for you. Um, you shall dwell in the land of Goshen. You shall be near me. You and your children and your children's children and your flocks, your herds and all that you have, there I will provide for you. For there are yet five years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have do not come to poverty. Joseph not only forgave his brothers, he treated them with great love and forgiveness. What a story. This is the character of God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then the psalmist begins to list some of them. Forgives all your iniquity, heals all your diseases, redeems your life from the pit. Boy, that could be Joseph, redeemed out of the pit of slavery, crowns you with his steadfast love and mercy, satisfies you with good. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide. He will not keep his anger forever. At times what we do gets him angry because he sees how much we hurt ourselves. Just like a parent looking at a child and they're, they're hurting themselves and the parent is upset. But, but he lets go of it. He does not deal with us according to our sins. He does not repay us according to our iniquities. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward us. As far as the east is from the west, so far he moves our transgressions away from us. He forgives us, and they're gone. This is what Jesus knows. When he calls to us, Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Love your enemies. Do good and lend and expect nothing in return. He's looking to give us a new life. Freed from animosity. Freed from the burden of carrying the load of sins that we count against others. Again, resentment is the poison we give ourselves while expecting that somehow we're going to be hurting someone else. It never, ever, ever works that way. I entitled my sermon, Hope for the Enemy. Hope for my enemy. But who is my enemy? For Joseph, was it his brothers? No, he saw God's purpose in all of it. The enemy we face is really quite interesting, I think. Paul talked about it in the second lesson. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam, that first man, all die. So also in Christ, the new Adam, shall all be made alive. And then he talks about sowing seed and the resurrection and the body we have. Uh, the body we have now is like a kernel of grain. It looks like kernel of corn and you put it in the earth and it doesn't look like a kernel of corn when it comes up, right? Whatever you plant is of one nature, but it comes up looking quite differently, although the DNA is all the same in the kernel and in the corn plant. So it is with the, the, our body. We will be buried with an earthly body. We will be raised into something so much more glorious and so much more full. We live in our life with this earthly body. We live in the battle between the old Adam, the old sinful nature in us, and the new Adam, Christ in us. And they are at war with one another. Who is my enemy? I think my enemy is the old sinful nature in me. Not the sinful nature in you, that has hurt me. My enemy is the one who takes and holds onto grudges. I thought of the phrase, 
when I'm thinking about hope for my enemy. I thought about a, a phrase that was turned around in the 1970s, but it came from the War of 1812, that most Ohio history students, at least in junior high or high school, should know about, and that's the Battle of Lake Erie over Perry's Monument, over by, by uh, Putin Bay, uh, over towards Sandusky, or past Sandusky. Uh, Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry on September 10, 1813, won the Battle of Lake Erie. And he wrote a letter to the uh, commanding general of the Army, the land forces, General William Henry Harrison. He said, Dear General, we have met the enemy, and they are ours. Two ships, two brigs, one schooner, and one sloop. Yours with great respect and esteem. O. H. Perry. That phrase, we have met the enemy and they are ours, meaning we've won the battle, and now the, the uh, Lake Erie is secure for the, uh, for the forces of the United States was taken by the uh, cartoonist Walt Kelly, who did political satire with his Pogo comic strip. And on the very first Earth Day, 1970, he did a poster. I have a, a picture of it here. It's on my door of my, my office. Um, like large apple trees. You see a bunch of apples up top and just garbage at the bottom. And it says in the words, we have met the enemy, and not he is ours, he is us. We're polluting our own earth. The enemy isn't somebody else. Uh, this was a, a, a famous poster from the first Earth Day, and has carried that, that theme has carried on throughout the years. We've met the enemy. Who's ruining the earth? It's us. The next year, he did a comic strip with his Pogo comic strip, and it really has the same theme. Pogo and uh, uh, um, porcu porcupine are walking through a beautiful garden er uh, forest area. And po uh, porcupine says, Oh, Pogo, the beauty of the forest primeval gets me in the heart. And as they're walking carefully along, Pogo says, It gets me in the feet, porcupine. And then they're sitting on a tree stump, and it says, it is hard walking on all this stuff. It just shows garbage all at the bottom that has floated up. And our people have dropped and, and littered. Yep, son, he says, we have met the enemy, and he is us. So when I say there's hope for my enemy, I'm taking that second way of understanding it. There's hope for me that I don't have to carry the burden of drinking poison, thinking I'm hurting someone else. I do not need to carry the burden of resentment and bitterness and anger and animosity. Jesus Christ has forgiven me far more. What was that one song we, we sang? I, I, love, I love the words of it so much. How deep the Father's love for me. seeing it right now. Oh no, it wasn't. It was the it was the next song. That's why I couldn't find it. Forgive our sins as we forgive. What trivial debts are owed to us? How great our debt to you. What people have sinned against us is nothing compared to what we have sinned against God. And what does God do? He removes your sins as far as the east is from the west. He forgives all your iniquity. He heals all your diseases. He redeems our life from the pit. Yes, me and you. And Jesus then invites us in that forgiveness, that absolute forgiveness and love. He invites us to go out free and to love our enemy and do good to those who hate you. Just like Joseph. 
Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Love your enemies. It wouldn't be possible unless Christ, the new Adam, is alive in us. But with his life, we are set free. Amen. We come to our offering. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that have been presented this day and this week. That as a church, Lord, we are given stewards, stewardship of the gospel. The repeated message that we need to hear over and over again that we are forgiven and we can live a new life free from the burdens that we carry. Thank you that you have borne our sins so that we do not need to bear them for any other. Lord, use these offerings to further the proclamation of the gospel to our members, <coughs> our community, and the world. In Jesus' name, amen. And then we come to our, <coughs> our prayers. Um, we should note that yesterday we had the funeral for Maggie Spread. And then today, Debbie Summers' mother, uh, Mary Bacani, passed away. And she'd been quite ill for some time. And another friend, Eleanor, had been moved to hospice. So we, we keep the Streb and Summers family in our prayers, as we also pray for these others. But we begin in our responsive prayer in the green bulletin. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Lord, with the situation in Ukraine, we know I, I believe, Lord, we know the truth, that Russia has nothing to fear from the United States. And yet, their President Putin is living in fear, and so he has responded with threats of war that are so real. Lord, we would pray that, that he would come to realize, Lord, that how we treated Germany after World War II and, and, and Japan is in the nature of our people. And that he really has nothing to fear from us. Find ways, Lord, for the transforming power of your forgiveness to set him free and the people who are advising him free from their fears. Only in Christ can he be set free. Lord, we pray for a miracle. We pray, Lord, for peace in uh, um, in Europe. We pray, Lord, for safety for and healing for those who are suffering from the coronavirus. We pray, Lord, for Kathy and Dolores and Nina, for Bob and Jim, Rachel and Lucinda, Steve. We pray for Alicia and, Mar and, and Cheryl and Dick, for Terry and Georgianne, Susan and Batsy, Ricky and Francis, Tom and Jake. We pray, Lord, that you would surround with your comfort the families of Maggie Streb and Mary Bacani and the uh, Howard Santilli and Jeff Chine. And we continue with the prayers as we have them printed. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew, uh, stay me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. We continue with the prayer of consecration and the, uh, the, the Lord's Prayer, and then we receive communion.
On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And together we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. from the top cellophane cover then together take and eat the body of Christ given for you thank you Lord Jesus and then we remove the foil cover from the cup and then together take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you Amen. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Well, we come to the prayer at the backside of the bulletin and our closing song. And that prayer is Martin Luther's evening prayer. And we pray together. The Lord be with you. Excuse me. And let us pray together. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us this day. We ask you to forgive us all our sins where we have done wrong, and graciously protect us this night. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We come to our closing song. Um, it's entitled, when God, When Human Bonds Are Broken. Thinking about this pain that we do uh, cause each other. We're going to sing verses 1 through 4. We'll sing it to a tune that we know better. The tune is, Jesus Calls Us, or the Tumult. Um, and so these words may be new, but the tune is, is well known. God, God, there it is, I gotta find them. God, when human bonds are broken and we lack the love or skill to restore the hope of healing, give us grace and make us still. Through that stillness with your spirit, come into our world of trust for the same. Said we seek release from the pain of earlier living. Set us free and grant us peace. Send us God of the beginning, humbly hopeful into life. Use us as a means of blessing. Make us stronger.
Well, thank you all for joining today in worship on Saturday. And we invite people to join us for worship on Sunday as well. And we'll be back here next Saturday for Transfiguration, the end of Epiphany. Receive the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for being here.